You don't think Kyler Murray's throwing on Saturday? I don't. Saying? You you know more than I do about that, probably. But it doesn't. That would be like surprise. You know? I'll tell you. No, no, I, I, Matt. I'll tell you right now. That would be a surprise to the NFL Network. I'll tell you that. That'd be that'd be oh, news. I, I hope he does. Well, that I mean, of great. course. I mean, look, uh, I'm biased because I've been part of a broadcast that only, thankfully, gets bigger and better every year uh, with the hard work and crew that puts together uh, the entire production. It makes no sense to not throw. I mean, it, it just get out there and throw in the whole business of you don't know who you're throwing to. It doesn't matter. Scouts aren't there saying, well, that ball was high, that ball. They just want to see the guy have the ball in his hands Step back, see the footwork. That's what matters. And then to see how fast the ball jumps out of his hand. When That's all everyone last year was talking about was Baker Mayfield, how the ball flew out of his hands and how the ball arrived with such zip, it kind of surprised a lot of people in person. And I would love to see Kyler Murray do all of that. Um, that said, in my estimation, what's the most important thing in having been around the combine as ever is the eye in the sky for the tape and then the interview process when a team looks at somebody and, and, and hears them talk about football and how smart they are on, on the grease board. That said, we're going to be talking about the measurements all day long. What's more important to you, Matt, hand size or height? I think hand size because we've seen height break down. And you just mentioned Baker Mayfield. Russell Wilson, Drew Brees, those guys are, they're under six foot two, which when I started this job eight years ago, that was the threshold. You had to be six foot two. We've seen that change. And I think you can be creative enough to get a guy moving around to find passing windows. If you have small hands, I think not only do you have fumble concerns, but you know, I've, I've talked to guys before. I, I actually had this conversation with Russell at his combine was that he was able to put so much velocity on the ball because he had big hands. And I know there are guys like Baker and Pat Mahomes who don't have the largest hands in the world, but they're both over that nine inch threshold. So with, with Kyler Murray, one thing that I would want to go back and see, and I I have the numbers in front of me, he didn't fumble a whole lot, but how many hard hits did he take behind a defensive line or excuse me, an offensive line that will have four players drafted his left tackle, left guard, right guard, and right tackle will be drafted. So how many hits did he take where, you would think, look at that and see, oh, that, that type of hit could create a fumble in the NFL. You know, Marcus Mariota is someone that stood out as not having very big hands, having fumbling problems in college. Now he has those same issues in the NFL. So when I look at it, like I feel like with height, you know, we can make a guy move around enough to find those passing windows, to make creative plays. And, and Kyler Murray is such a great athlete. He's going to be able to do that. But when it comes to hand size, if you're going to have trouble – holding on to the ball. We'll probably see him get the Jared Goff treatment, you know, the squirt in the water bottle on the ball when it comes to pro day workouts and private workouts, because that is going to be a question mark for him. The best thing that happens to guys like ourselves who make money talking about the NFL draft is Kyler Murray, because this was a boring draft until, until he got in it. And that like, for me, whether it's on my own podcast or when I come to radio shows with other people, that's all we've talked about for two months is the the mystique of Kyler Murray and whether he'll go to Arizona If you buy into what Cliff Kingsbury said, what happens to Josh Rosen? Would the Raiders trade Derek Carr? I mean, there's a million scenarios. And I I think he is, honestly, Kyler Murray is the domino we're waiting to see fall. The rest of the draft is is usually pretty easy to figure out in the first five or six picks. But he has made it interesting this year where it it feels like teams could fall in love with the the aptitude that he brings and the fact that he could be a difference maker at the position. If that's the case, then you could – I don't think it's crazy to see an Arizona or Oakland – say, hey, this guy can get us somewhere that Derek Carr can't or Josh Rosen won't, so let's start over with this head coach, especially if you're Arizona. If you're going to hire Cliff Kingsbury, you got to let him run his offense. Well, the th- I, I, don't, I don't know if Josh Rosen's that guy. Yeah, I mean, because the last one for you on this subject, even though I know I'm playing into what you said, every single conversation <laughs> you've been having is, is that what's really so fascinating about it isn't just because he's a Heisman Trophy winner, um, which we all usually do talk about, it's we're, we're wondering is this because if he does if he does get drafted top five top ten does start get out there then the transformation of the National Football League offensive schemes from the 20th to the 21st century would be complete and then we're wondering just how how small can you go right that's that's the idea of, of what makes Kyla Murray so fascinating. Yeah, and if you're a football fan, it, it gives you bragging rights over Major League Baseball. They were ready to change the rules for this guy. They give him give him a big league contract right out of the gate, and you know let let him have the fifteen million dollars. So he's 
he's going to be a trendsetter one way or another. Um, and hopefully he has success uh, in the NFL so that we can say, you know, yeah, this guy picked our sport over baseball. And, and now he's look at all the success he's having. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.